Dude, trophies didn't arrive in time. What? And you don't even have a fucking suit on. Henry, go to the thrift store, get some trophies, and get yourself a f***ing suit. Yeah, I'll be back in like half an hour. Half an hour. I just, I, that guy is just so fucking unprofessional. I just, ugh. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy here with Henry Quinney and today we're going to talk about value mountain bike of the year. Now we all know that those fancy mountain bikes, those $10,000 mountain bikes that we see in the field test, they work great. But you know what else? Well, we all know that you definitely don't need a bike that expensive to have fun. Just the opposite actually, with more and more bikes offering 95% of the performance for maybe just a third of the price. All right, let's take a look at our five nominees, starting with the Da Vinci Marshall. So the Da Vinci Marshall 29 Dior is a $2,300 bike that's amazingly enough engineered and made in Canada. Now the 130mm platform features 140mm fork, which should be just enough to get you up and down just about anything. Right, but that Canadian DNA doesn't matter if the bike doesn't perform. Now thankfully it does. We had the Marshall at the field test and we found it to be a pretty versatile and forgiving machine. Very well rounded. Now, interestingly enough, the Marshall wasn't the quickest on our test. And that's not why it's in here. It's in here for its versatility. Another bike to offer lots of versatility is our next nomination, the Ibis Ripley. Now the Ripley has long been popular with people who favor a fleet footed bike that offers lots of punch going up and down. Now the new aluminum AF version costs less while weighing more, with the idea being that it still holds on to that efficient, precise handling nature that the more expensive carbon bike had. Now Ibis are a brand that has been known for its long-term relationship with the DW Link, and this bike is no different. However, it's a more refined version, and it aims to give more frame stiffness at a lower frame weight. Right, and the result on the trail is a bike that rewards your pedaling. If you pedal hard, this bike is gonna answer and you're gonna go a whole lot quicker. Now our next bike on the list is Polygon's Siskiyou? Siskiyou, Sisk me! Siskiyou! <laughs> I don't know how to say that. No, that doesn't make sense. It was no. the other way around and my brain couldn't think fast enough. I need to wipe the sweat off <laughs> my face. Now this next bike that we're gonna talk about, well, it's Polygon's Siskiyou T8 that we also had at the Value Bike field trip. Now this bike had perfectly reasonable geometry that was in the right ballpark. However, it was its suspension feel that really separated it from the crowd. Exactly. Once you get that climb behind you, the Polygon suspension did an amazing job of smoothing out in the roots and rocks. You know, it's not the best peddler, but anybody looking at this bike, that's not what they're going for. I'm going to do my tie a little bit, some progression through the video. Now, another bike on our list and the next nomination is a shade more expensive than the others. And that is the Vitus Escarp. At $4,200, it is more expensive, but it still manages to cram in a lot of value. No doubt aided by their consumer direct sales model, we should mention, but for that money, you're getting Fox factory suspension, an XT 12 speed drivetrain, and a set of DT Swiss XM 1700 wheels. Now all that, along with that carbon front triangle, should add up to a whole lot more performance than what Vitas are asking for the price tag. Absolutely. And our reviewer, Mike Kazima, expressed that even though this bike is more expensive than some of the other nominees, it manages to have a value that few bikes can come close to. Our last nomination is a new value hardtail from BMC. Now, one of the best ways to save a few bucks on your new mountain bike is to find one that changes that rear shock for a lower price tag, much like BMC's new two-stroke aluminum hardtails do. The new two-stroke is designed to be an entry point into cross-country riding and racing, but that frame sports a whole bunch of interesting features, and that bike, well, it looks fast just standing still. Absolutely. Now, whilst it may not be carbon, it shows that you don't need carbon to make a great XC race bike, and it's more than light enough to be worthy of some upgrades. Now, its geometry might pale in significance to some of the more aggressive trail bikes, but you've got to remember that it is amply suitable and slack for anything on an XC race course. And now, obviously, the two-stroke is not for trail riders who like to get themselves into sketchy places. This is more for a mountain biker who just wants to go for a mountain bike ride, and if that happens to include a cross-country race or two, well, then the two-stroke is going to handle it well. And without further ado, it's time to announce the winner of the 2021 Pink Bike Value Mountain Bike of the Year Awards. That's the trophy you got, eh? They'll get a nice trophy, but this is, this is all I could get at such short notice. Are we going to take the price tag off? 
what different at this point, I think in for a penny, in for a pound. But the winner is the IBIS Ripley AF for managing to pack in all the performance from the carbon version into an aluminum frame and a far lower price point. Exactly. And sure, it's heavier, but that's not gonna matter out in the real world when you're out there riding the bike and having a ton of fun. So there you go, our value mountain bike of the year, Ibis's new Ripley AF. Thank you very much for watching the 2021 Pink Bike Value Mountain Bike of the Year. Now we've got plenty more awards to give out. So stay tuned for the bad suits more. and weird porcelain dolls. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.